In this moment, what do you think that we need to look at concerning mental well-being? Thank you so much for that question. I mean, these are really very, very challenging times for all of us. I would say, you know, we know from our research that 50% of mental health issues develop by age 14 and 75% by early 20s. So this is really a time of uncertainty and we're reminded so much of the importance of our mental health. It's very crucial to our overall wellness as much as our physical health. They're very interrelated. One can often man itself, manifest itself into the other. And, you know, I like to say there's no health without mental health. So in terms of what I think we should be looking for now, one is we should be looking at taking care of our mental health the same way that we look after our physical well-being. It's, it's vitally important. And I think two, make our self-care and mental, uh, mental wellness a habit. Do what we can to help ourselves, to help our mental health, to help us cope, uh, whether it's listening to a song that we like, uh, distracting yourself with a great movie, going out into nature, FaceTime with friends, but don't ignore your feelings. Really think about them and pay attention to them. And you can also draw on skills that might have really helped you in the past to manage through difficult times. And a couple of examples of those are maybe you wanna keep a daily diary uh, of lessons that you've learned during this time. Um, I write in a gratitude journal every morning, three things that I'm grateful for. Uh, you can also express your feelings through art, uh, through music like Heather does, uh, through climbing, drawing, dancing, playing music. Uh, but most importantly, talk about your feelings and your concerns uh, with someone that you know and trust. As, as Heather said, there is somebody out there that you trust. And we think it's important to know who that person is now. If you have a physical illness, you generally know who you're going to see. You'll go to your doctor, you'll go to hospital, but who would you turn to if you have a mental health issue? And we think it's important for you to identify that person right now. Who's that person that you could trust and start talking to about your mental health? And we feel that kindness and compassion to yourself are incredibly important when it comes to your mental health uh, and, and also to somebody else's. And every day is a new opportunity for you to practice that. That's a really important message, actually. I think the idea is there. I, I love the idea about making sure that we understand, I mean, our physical health, we need to exercise and we need to eat well. And we must yes. see that in the same way as mental health now. It's so important to recognize them there. And, and we don't often see that, do we? No, you know, my daughter often says, just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So we really have to listen to our emotions and, and take them seriously and, and work on them and talk about it. And now we, we've noticed um, through our sessions on the Global Classroom, uh, we've become increasingly aware that there are children that may have been struggling with their mental well-being, perhaps for the first time in lockdown. Uh, and also there are some of those who've had past issues that are now resurfacing because and they're in a situation where there's a lack of their normal support structure, which could have been a grandparent or a friend at school. And so there's a need for people to reach out uh, to each other more so now. So what advice would you have for young people about this? You know, we feel it's, it's very normal. I want to say to all the children in particular, it's very normal to feel afraid now and to have the strong emotions that you're having. And everyone is responding very, very differently to this situation, whether it's your first time um, or not. This is a traumatic experience and, and often there are triggers. Uh, we call them triggers. They're things that remind us of events that happened in our, in our past and it raises our anxiety. So um, it's okay to not feel okay right now. Don't put more pressure on yourself. The best gift that you could give yourself and someone else right now is kindness through two things, kindness through connection and kindness through having conversations about your, your mental health. Uh, your friends are a great source of support and comfort for you. And I'm sorry uh, that we're not in schools now, so you don't really have that, but everybody's talking about social distancing and we like to change that a little bit. We say that it's important to remain physically distant but socially connected. Uh, this is really a time when technology is our friend and we should be using it wisely. 
Uh, and there are some great tools that we offer for you. It's really, I know for some of you, you may be frightened to have a conversation about mental health. You might not feel confident. You might feel afraid. Am I going to say the right thing to my friends? But we have partnered with an organization called jack.org. And they have a wonderful tool called bethere.org. And it teaches you how to have these really difficult conversations and how to talk to a friend, ask the right questions, and get them some help. And also through our foundation at bornthisway.foundation, get help now. We also offer some great conversations and, and um, ideas of ways to have these difficult conversations. And even the pandemic, has really uprooted so many of our lives. And these are important tools to have so that we can really support one another. And practicing kindness and building a more supportive team around yourself is really a great way to tap into that connection and to tap into those conversations. Really practical, sensible advice. Uh, thank you for that. I think some great reference points to go to as well. I just love what you guys are doing the foundation about this and supporting it. So thank you. We're going to go try and go around the world now. We've got a question coming in, I think, from Cambodia. OK, it's a beautiful question. It's coming from Fayoun in Cambodia. Let's try and cross over there now and hear what's being said. <laughs> Thank you also, Thayun, for that great question. And thank you for being brave enough to ask it. I'm Again, I'm sorry this has affected your school life because it's really an important time to learn and also be with friends right now. But I want to share with you that there's a saying, uh, particularly here in the States, I don't know if it's around the world, but there's a saying that laughter is the best medicine. And it's the best medicine because it relieves stress, it helps your muscles relax, and it helps our immune system. So you're already doing something really wonderful for yourself and, and your friends and something that's helpful. So it's okay to laugh and it's okay to laugh a lot. And I know it might feel strange to laugh and feel joy at the same time that you might be feeling fear or sadness, but you can have all of these emotions at the same time and you shouldn't feel bad. Um, about that. So I encourage you now to do what makes you happy, um, what, what self-care that you might have. We see a lot of young people really finding their purpose now and making a difference in the world, whether it's, you know, sewing masks uh, for people that need them, helping their neighbors. So there's many things that you can do to make yourself feel happy right now. And I also think it's important for you to develop a schedule. When you're in school, you have a schedule and, and it makes your day flow and it makes your day happy and joyful. And we don't have that now. So I think it's it's really important to, to try to develop one, no matter how small it might be, some type of a little routine for you uh, that keeps you on track. And, and also being kind to others. I know that when I feel down or when I might feel sad, I try to do something for somebody else because it, it makes you feel better. Um, Dr. Tierney talked about uh, the uh, endorphins or the cortisol. That's also created when you're kind. You get these feelings these of cortisol rushing in your body. So it's a very positive thing when you help somebody else. Um, and I think another great way is just embedding kindness into your everyday life. We have a challenge at Born This Way Foundation called Be Kind 21. We know from research that if you do something for 21 days, it can become a habit. So we'd like to challenge you to be mindful of kindness for 21 days and hopefully beyond and join our challenge. You can join it at bornthisway.foundation slash bekind21. And it's an opportunity for you to just embed kindness into your everyday life. And and it has, I call it a ripple effect. You know, if you take a pebble and drop it in a river or if you drop it in water, it echoes far and wide. It has a ripple effect. So kindness does the same thing. 
we encourage you to join us and spread kindness, be part of that ripple effect uh, in the world. Cynthia, thank you for that. I love the idea about the pebble falling in there. And um, we all want to try and do that today in this moment as well. Uh, the next question came across from Europe, from Andrea from Europe. Uh, and he, he says down here that the world feels a bit fractured at the moment, a bit broken with everyone arguing. What can we do to come back together and accept each other? I really understand, Andrea, uh, where you're coming from, because I think we're all seeing that and we're all concerned about uh, the anger and how people are treating one another. And I think the best thing that we can do to come together is one, model kind behavior in our own selves. You know, it starts in your heart and then it starts in the home. So it's very, very important to model kind behavior and also treat others with respect, treat them the same way that you would want to be treated. And um, it goes very far and very wide. Uh, there's also great value in sharing positive stories that are happening, um, also sad ones, because it helps validate other people's feelings and they realize that they're not alone. So we've really learned that there's a power in storytelling and they're just great ways of understanding other people's lives and, and maybe learning something, maybe getting inspired, you know, on our own as well. And we have a platform called Channel Kindness. You can read about it at channelkindness.org. And these are incredibly inspiring stories. Uh, it's a digital platform for young people who write stories of kindness and bravery and resilience in their community. So we invite everyone to share your amazing story um, and join us on that journey. Well, thank you very much for that. It's amazing. Now, in terms of questions, we're almost at the end of your time in the global classroom. However, is there perhaps a message you want to share with the children around the world today, particularly? Absolutely, I would. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you so much, Jeff, um, and, and to WHO, uh, UNICEF, for having me. It, it was an honor to speak with you and to be part of this program. But to all of the young people who joined today, first, I want to thank you for helping to be part of building a kinder and braver world. I want you to know that we value each and every one of you. Your voice is so very important in this world. And now, more than ever, you have an opportunity to find your purpose and make a difference in this world. And together, we can be that one global mind and build a kinder and braver world. And I think as a call to action or a call to arms, I would like to ask you to do two things for me, just two. Um, always first, always be kind to yourself and others. Um, it spreads far and wide. It's that pebble in the water. And two, find that someone to turn to now for your mental health. Don't wait until the problem happens. That's why our foundation exists. Born This Way Foundation exists because my daughter, Stephanie, who many of you knew, may know as Lady Gaga, developed um, mental illness, anxiety, and depression in middle school. And neither she nor I really had the knowledge or the resources of the best way to help her. Uh, and she was very young. She was only 14 years old. If she had known at that point, if we had all known who to turn to, it would have been so much better, you know, early on. So I encourage you to identify who that person is and start having those conversations now. Care for your physical health at the same as your mental health. And, and start talking about it. And I invite you also to uh, come with us on this journey, get connected to Born This Way Foundation. Uh, you can visit um, us and join us on social media at BTW Foundation. So thank you, we value and love you all.